Good evening, y'all. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Karim. I'm an Egyptian. I've been living here in Texas for about five years now. I cook barbecue, I teach cooking classes, and I'm also a food tourist guide. Brisket is literally the love of my life. I have switched my life around just for brisket. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about brisket. I'll walk you through the whole cooking process from how to choose a brisket, how to trim it, how to season it, resting, slicing, and eating, and everything. I have been really wanting to do cooking videos, and since we are quarantined together now, there's no better way to start other than this baby right here. So let's do this. Uh, he's the hardest working trucker that I know. Brisket mainly comprises of two main muscles. The fat is underneath and the point kind of overlaps it with this layer of fat. One thing I look for is kind of an even shape. Obviously that point part, the fatty part of the brisket is gonna be larger than the, than the flat or the lean. So I always try to pick out a brisket that has a larger lean and that's always gonna be more even. It's always gonna be a good thing. And speaking of good things, Six inch boning knife. Whenever I'm working with meat, I always try to keep a clean hand. A clean hand is gonna be holding the knife, it's gonna be holding any of my oils or seasonings, so I'm not really uh, cross contaminating uh, the meat or my cooking utensils. This is gonna be the first thing that I start tackling the deckle fat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. I'm not really removing all of it, you don't want to take too much out of it because that is what connects both muscles. This deckel fat is the best part of the brisket that you can use and make sausage out of or make burger meat out of, so I'm gonna save that for later. A lot of that silver skin, I like to take all that off. This is not really usable stuff, so I'm just gonna toss that. kind of shape that up a little bit more. It's really important to have good aerodynamics. That's the whole point of having the smoke and the heat just coming over the brisket evenly. So the bottom side looks good to me. I'm gonna flip it over right now and start working on that top side and that's really where most of the work is gonna be. So the whole point is trying to maintain almost like a quarter inch of fat throughout the whole brisket. I find this fatty side to render a lot faster and a lot better than this side, so I tend to trim a little less on the fatty side. Also, this side is going to be the side that is facing the fire, so I don't want to take too much out of this because this is going to be like a layer of protection from the fire. So I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to take off a whole piece from the side just to expose where the fat and where the meat starts. So now I can really see you know where I'm trimming. So this right here looks feels looks and feels good. I always want to have a little bit more fat on this side of the brisket. I'm gonna go ahead and like shape this a little bit more. I'm gonna switch over to the other side and then I will take this layer of fat off so that I can see more on what I'm working with. This is the fat that connects both muscles together. Usually it's also a lot bigger and thicker than this, so I'm not really gonna do much to it. This is what you make burnt ends out of, so this will burn and it will crisp up and it will just be like jerky, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off. And again, I will definitely be using that, so I'm not really shy with the trimming. That looks perfect. I'll flip it over and start seasoning now. So I like to apply a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, canola oil, olive oil. You can use any kind of oil that you want. Some people use mustard, uh, hot sauce. You can really use anything or even skip that part. Just because we are in Texas, we're only using salt, pepper. We are blessed with using post oak. I'm from Egypt and post oak or oak wood, we use that to make furniture. 
So every time I tell any of my friends that I burn oak for a barbecue, they're not very happy about it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and liberally rub this with salt. I use kosher salt, seasoning all of the sides. When I'm cooking uh, for my barbecue pop-ups, these sides are what I give out to, for sampling. So you gotta have that perfect bite and the perfect crunch on every single part of the brisket. Patting it down, I don't wanna rub it so I'm not messing up this perfect layer that, that I just worked. And then repeat the same thing with coarse ground black pepper. So that looks good. I'm gonna flip it over to the top side now. Make sure you pat it down really nicely so that once you flip it over, you're not losing all these spices that you just put on. So I, I used to be a, a banker in Egypt. I did that for about five years. I just visited a friend back here in 2012 and actually the first brisket that I ever tried was Rudy's brisket. As all of our Texans know, this is just gas station brisket. But to me, as an Egyptian, I tried the moist part of Rudy's brisket, and it's just like, wow. Like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I need to be here and doing this. All right, so this is ready to go on the smoker. If I have the option, I would always like to do this overnight. The salt really helps cure and get inside and penetrate the fibers of the meat so you end up with a more even flavor and seasoning throughout the whole brisket. So I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge overnight and we're gonna put it on the smoker first thing in the morning. So we'll see you then. These briskets have been sitting overnight in the fridge. I actually ended up adding another brisket. So that's three total. So. It's time to go to the smoker now. The pit is at 250 right now, which is a perfect temperature. I'm gonna add all these three briskets, kind of like right around the same point right here. And the smaller one is gonna go in the middle. You want that fire to be hovering around anywhere between 225 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. Always have clean airflow, clean smoke. And that's it. Let, we're gonna let this fire do its magic. I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz them. This is about six hours in. I'm gonna spray again one more time right before I wrap and I'll show you what to look for. So it is 10.30 p.m. Briskets have been on for about seven, seven hours, seven and a half hours. It's almost ready to wrap. Look at that. It is, this is called the black gold. So this is what eight hours of smoke looks like amazing crust on the brisket a lot of people go by temperature but i think going by color uh, is the best right before you wrap because after you wrap you don't get any more color so this is the perfect color for me i'm gonna add these juices back into it and now it's time to wrap double layered foil Really nice and tight. Gonna continue to braise and cook until it's done. Which is about another three to four hours. That's ready to go back in the smoker. All right, so these briskets came off at two in the morning last night. 36 hours in the process right now. So this is truly a labor of love. Super important, you gotta rest brisket at least, at least four hours. The best thing about this as well, I have three briskets here. It would just take me 10 minutes to slice this brisket. I can feed like 50 people. So let's take it over to the cutting board and have that beautiful moment of truth. 
the unraveling. So these briskets are gonna have so much cooking liquid, like cooking juice as well as melted fat. So I'm definitely gonna save all of that. You can just simply baste the brisket with it after you slice it. Or you can actually use it to make sauces, or there's so many different applications that we can, we can talk about later. I wish you can smell this right now. The smell is incredible. On the lean side, cut this way against the grain. Oh my god, look at that. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna keep cutting that way all the way to where that point, the point muscle starts here, the fatty part of the biscuit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right in half. And at this point, I like to give you the, what I call the money shot. That's sexy. Let's give this a try, shall we? Try it. Look at that bark, the smoke ring, perfectly tender and moist and juicy. Mm. Oh my god, really nicely seasoned, super just, just dissolves in my mouth. Has a little bit of like dark chocolate, coffee-ish kind of flavor from all that crack, coarse black pepper and smoke and just resting overnight in that cooler. That is a perfectly cooked brisket. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any special requests, I'll totally be so happy to cook anything that you want me to cook for you. I'll be having more videos coming up soon. In the meantime, sending all the love from Texas and stay home and eat brisket. Take that part and you can dip it in these juices right here. And you can just stuff your face in it. Mm.